out. Well, I hope everybody's really well. It's lovely to be joining you all this evening. Uh, usually I would just be getting back from uh, St Lucia in usual times and what have you. So it's great to be able to share with you uh, some of the joys actually in the wildlife that I've seen over that time. Just a little bit about myself. I've been with Nature Trek now since 2008. And actually my first tour I did for Nature Trek was with Byron uh, in Spain looking for wolves and bustards. And since then I've been to the, both polar areas, the Antarctic here with Gentoo penguins, the Arctic, and lots of places in between from the Solom Islands to Monterey Bay. But this evening, I want to take you just over 4,000 miles over towards the Caribbean, over the Azores, and heading down here to the Lesser Antillean Islands. And St Lucia itself is right bang in the middle over here, if you can see there with my cursor. And if we scale down towards Venezuela, we've got Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm going to start off, we call these islands the Lesser Antillean Islands, and the further away you get from Venezuela, the, the, less, the lower the diversity of birds you get, but uh, the greater you, number of endemic birds you actually get there. And actually most of these outer islands here have their own, very own endemic parrot, for example. And with St Lucia, we land down in the bottom of the island down here. Um, if you go all the way up towards the top, it's about 30 miles uh, lot wide or what have you and but all of this middle bit here is covered in big mountains so we start off down here in the south and we usually arrive at about quarter past about three quarter past three in the afternoon and this gives us the chance before it gets dark sort of quarter to six six o'clock to actually see quite a lot of St Lucia as we head all the way up this west coast to Anne Chastenay, which is over here where we actually um, stay and this is a nice sheltered side of St Lucia the Atlantic site tends to be a lot rougher, but we're over on the much calmer um, Caribbean seaside. And most of this kind of central part of St. Lucia is forest, um, some of it secondary, a little bit of primary. And we spend a couple of days actually heading up there to look for some of the wildlife that's there. And this is the sort of view that you'll get from the very south. This is very close to the airport looking north. Uh, you can see all the mountains there. There's about 24 different volcanic vents. And on your left hand side, you're looking at the pitons. These are two volcanic plugs very close to where we actually stay, which are like the icons really of St Lucia itself. And as we get very close to Anne Chastenay, you'll be very much following the pitons all along the way. This is Soufrier, the town very close to where we stay. And uh, also within this kind of 12 kilometer square zone of, of volcanic activity. And Sulphur Springs, which is like an open caldera. Literally this mud here is only a couple of kilometers above from hot magma. So you get lots of steam mud. And in the places where it's cooler, you can actually go for mud baths and have the mud put on your skin for, for better complexity and, uh, com and what have you. And when we get to Anne Chastenay, which is our, our sort, of, sort of rustic boutique hotel, it's just the most wonderful paradise place. At this time of the year, we, we go in January, sort of first, second week of January, when the dry season is just starting to kick in. And if we do get rain, it generally tends to rain at night or we have very brief showers throughout the day. And the rooms are spread throughout the hillside in a way that when you're looking out of your balcony towards the sea or the pitons, you wouldn't realise that you had neighbours or other people very close by. And this tour for you has been designed both for those of you who would like to obviously experience uh, an island like St Lucia, but also if one of you is, is, is perhaps a slightly less interested in wildlife, then it's a designed in a way that the afternoons are available for you to enjoy the beach, the sunshine, and just exploring uh, this part of St Lucia for yourself. And this is actually the beach restaurant down here where we uh, alternate eating between there and a, a restaurant higher up. So it's a beautiful kind of wooden rooms reflecting the colours and the theme of St Lucia. Lots of beautiful St Lucian artwork in all the different rooms, unique artwork and flowers to reflect the country and the colour. And as I mentioned, there's lots of different restaurants here as well. We tend to alternate as a group between them. Down here at the beach, you've got the uh, grill bar. You've got a spara, which is a sort of East Indian Caribbean infusion food. And you can always mix and match menus so if you're not so keen on that sort of food you can always have the menu from from the main bar and the treehouse restaurant for example has a la carte uh, which we'll go to several times during the time that we're there it's a nine day tour so we've got the chance to eat in various places and try different foods and on one of the mornings actually we go to emeralds the gardens of the hotel to see where a whole variety of familiar 
plants that we might get in the supermarket and we actually see them growing for real. And we also meet the chefs and they cook us some fabulous food lo using local vegetables and fruit. And here we've got Chef Elijah and Chef Salvatore actually cooking up some food for our group uh, and then serving it up. And one thing I must emphasize is the hotel does fabulous creative dishes for vegans, for vegetarians and for all sorts of other um, uh, eating requirements. So, so you, you, you won't feel uh, left out, you'll feel actually you're having some fantastic creative food. And when we do go to eat, you've got beautiful night skies with the planets above us, even Mercury. On the beach, you might sometimes spot the white crown night herons looking for crabs, for example. The next morning, you'll wait to the pitons in the backdrop, uh, the chattering sounds of grey kingbirds like this one here, chattering away along with Zenaida doves. And also down by the beach, you've got one of the best, um, the best reefs in St Lucia, sheltered on this kind of west coast. You've got beautiful clear waters, the most magnificent untouched uh, corals to see lots of different fishes like this uh, file fish and some of them quite tame they get used to seeing people and also turtles like this green turtle here which often feed on the eelgrass and on two of the mornings we head out to look for dolphins and sometimes whales as well and here we've got some just in front of the pitons we go out usually on a catamaran, but sometimes a smaller boat, depending on the group size. And here we've got Fraser's dolphins, for example, actually in front of Anne Chastenay Beach itself. Generally, we're looking for pan tropical spotted dolphins. You can see the spots just on the surface of the animal here. And a little bit of footage from January last year. Just showing you how clear the water is and just how close these animals are and very calmly coming to the boats. While we're out doing the dolphin watching, there's also the chance to see some seabirds like these brown boobies, which look like they're kind of on their own kind of icing on top of the rocks here. And these guys specialize on flying fish. So when they are actually diving around you, unlike a gannet, which tends to dive straight down into the water, these tend to just go under the surface looking for those flying fish. And while we're out there, there is always the chance of pilot whales and also sperm whales. Here we've got a sperm whale that we saw a couple of years ago now in front of the pitons. These dive up to three kilometres down underwater and then come up for a good half an hour or so to replenish the oxygen in their muscles. And this one's just doing some blowing off to the left there and then going back down again. And last year we were very lucky, we had such calm waters. We even had three or four dwarf sperm whales. These are very difficult to see, very shy animals. And uh, we just uh, saw them in time before they just slipped underneath the surface of the water. And while we're on their trips, uh, we also just slip into Soufrier to a sea cave where there's thousands of these Antillean fruit bats. You're looking just into this slit, as you can see here, and uh, watching them kind of flying around and calling in front of you. There's quite a number of different people we meet uh, from across St Lucia as well. This is Vision. Some of you may have met him at the bird fair and here he's explaining about some of the birds that we're going to see with him at Descartes and in some of the dry habitat on the east of the island. In the middle here in the stripy top you've got Pamela. Uh, she's represented St Lucia in the Olympics uh, in, 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 in athletics and she's showing us some of the wildlife here at Millet. And here's Menno, he's the Anne Chastenay's guide. And he's brilliant at telling us about some of the stories to do with the plants that his grandmother told him. And so he takes us on a wonderful tour on the first day, seeing the plants and the wildlife and telling these different stories. And here's Vision at one of the wetlands. The wetlands are quite unusual habitats on St Lucia. And this one close to the south of the island is a great place for spotting ducks and coots, uh, egrets and herons like this juvenile little blue heron green herons as well, and also sometimes ospreys. But on many of the days, we actually focus our time in the rainforests. Um, some of this is tropical, sorry, some of this is secondary rainforest, some of it's primary as well. And we're basically looking at the lush vegetation and some of those kind of openings where you've maybe had some natural landslides that opens up the forest habitat. And here, for example, at Descartier, we're looking out for some time across the viewpoint where you will get the chance to spot things like broadwing hawks, which uh, squeak away as they're circling overhead. And you'll get the chance to hopefully see and hear St Lucia's emblematic bird, really, the uh, St Lucia parrot, of which there's over 2,000 pairs now. 
and uh, you'll often hear them squawking before you see them and here we've got one which is just doing a little bit of circling around very difficult to see in the trees but as soon as they fly across in pairs or small groups um, they become reasonably easy to spot overhead in this forest environment, we're also spotting things like land crabs and purple-throated carib hummingbirds. These are always very territorial and chasing each other. And if you get them in the right light, you can see this beautiful crimson pink throat. There's small Antillian euphonias. These goldfinch-sized birds sound like little twittering goldfinches feeding on mistletoe. And also up here, we might well see or hear the rufous-throated solitaire. This little song thrush-sized bird has a beautiful whistly song like this. So a really nice sound of the solitaire there. And in this forest environment, we're also looking for things like lesser Antillian flycatcher, the St. Lucia black finch, one of the endemics. So you've got about a dozen or so birds that are only found in those lesser Antillian islands. And then you've got some birds like the black finch, which is found just on St. Lucia. There's also the St. Lucia warbler, this beautiful bright yellow bird with a very distinctive song. which is very easy to see often outside your room. And the St. Lucia Oriole. And the great thing is, is that the rainforest is part of an ecological network all the way down to Anne Chastenay. So actually in the trees and plantations close to the hotel, we've also got the chance of seeing some of these endemics, like for example, the St. Lucia Oriole. We also go up into an aerial tram above the emergent forest vegetation, looking at the tree ferns, getting a real sense of the forest structure and how it works. And here we might have birds such as the St. Lucia peewee, a type of flycatcher, the grating sound of the mangrove cuckoo, and the grey trembler, a bird that has this long down curved beak for probim. It sounds a little bit like a blackbird singing. And this downward curved beak is ideal for probing in dead wood and have these little shivery wings as well when you see them come into your balcony outside your room. We also look out for the white-breasted thrasher, a critically threatened bird only found in Martinique and St Lucia and a bird that we tend to see in the dry habitat on the east coast. And of course there's hummingbirds like green-throated caribs, Antillian crested hummingbirds which are very tiny and come to these little flowers very close to the restaurants. You'll get the chance to see things like scaly naped pigeons and the grey kingbirds that I mentioned earlier, as well as carib grackles and beautiful butterflies. If the flowers are flowering in the way they normally do, we've got Caribbean buckeyes and long tailed skippers, gulf artilleries, and reptiles like anole lizards, uh, St. Lucia boas we see occasionally. This was a young animal we saw last year, just molting. And also, when we've got fruiting trees around Anchester today, we may see things like spectacled thrush and scaly breasted thrashers, which become very approachable actually when they're feeding on these fruits. Also finch-like birds such as the Lesser Antillian Saltator and these birds will be very common around your room. This is the Lesser Antillian Bullfinch. This one's just coming to some banana. And before we head on to Trinidad, one of my favourite, favourite sounds of St Lucia, it's a sound that if I'm watching the Caribbean on television, on dramas, I'll be listening out for this animal. It's the, it's a penny size, only the size of a one penny piece, lesser Antillian whistling frogs. And this is the sound that we hear when we are eating and going to bed in the evening. So a beautiful sound of St Lucia there. So I hope that's whetted your appetite to a wonderful place at this time of the year. It's 24, 25 degrees Celsius. It's a beautiful, beautiful heat and just a wonderful chance to warm up and see some lovely, rich wildlife really in this uh, you know, wonderful, wonderful country. So as we leave the pitons behind, we then travel literally just about an hour actually south of St Lucia into Trinidad. And these are some of the marshes and mangroves actually in the uh, island on the uh, west side of the island as we're coming into the airport. And this is Trinidad here. We tend to come into the airport around here and then spend lots of time exploring the forest in the north and also some of the habitats, the wetland habitats on the west coast, the east coast, and some of the drier savannah in the centre as well. We also get a little plane over to Tobago and spend time in the northeast of the island. 
and we'll come back to that in a, in a short moment. So this is the Acer Wright Centre where we are based. It's a beautiful place with, uh, again, sort of boutique rustic kind of rooms and Below us, we've got this wonderful planted area with lots of food for the animals to, to come to and food that's put out for them as well. And it's a great chance to photograph lots of wonderful wildlife. And in the mornings, the dawn chorus, the cocoa thrush dominating the dawn chorus. And later in the day, the chance to spot mop mots, parrots, uh, bellbirds, and all sorts of birds like that. And once the fruit's out, we've got the chance to look for wonderful, wonderful birds. These crow-sized orum pendolas, for example, coming down to the watermelon. This superb, beautiful palm tanager with all those soft greens and buff colours along its plumage. And of course, the chance to see birds such as the white-necked Jacob Jacobin hummingbirds up close. Here's an adult, here's a juvenile, and another perched adult just there. This is a violacea euphonia coming down from the canopies. Again, these birds feed on the mistletoe, but will come down to fruit as well. A white-chested emerald hummingbird. And look at this stunning copper-rumped emerald hummingbird just in front of me here. So you've got the chance to get up close. This is one of my favorite photographs here. This is the purple honey creeper with these little gems just under its eye and those beautiful yellow legs. A bird that's very well adapted to feeding on long tubular flowers, um, but likes to come to the nectar as well. And this green hermit hummingbird was actually nesting in the Acer Wright Center itself. And uh, we got to see her feeding her babies. So it's a really great chance to come together and just see such a diverse variety of wildlife. You'll all see mammals like the agoutis. And when we do go walking around Asa Wright, it's a chance to see, for example, the white bearded mannequin, which forms a lek. And you have all these males jumping around, calling and singing while there's females on the outskirts choosing the best male. And if you listen, you'll also hear this bird. It's the bearded bilber, bellbird, and this is the bird that was making that sound. This is the recording I took from him. This beautiful cocoa coloured head, these dangly bits coming down from its beak there. Often we'll see them out in the open through the scope, but on this occasion actually we have the wonderful bird under the canopy. So a really lovely chance there for you to see these very distinctive tropical birds. And while we're walking around there's also the chance to see a whole variety of other fauna as well. These tent making bats, one of my favourite ones to have found uh, when I was last out there. Big reptiles like these tago lizards, very cryptic spiny tailed tree lizards and snakes such as this grass machete and this boa constrictor. This one was out on a lawn just as I came out of my room. I got some quick snaps, went off to get people. Unfortunately by the time I came back it had gone but it was just beautiful, beautifully coloured and sunbathing on the lawn just outside the room. And if the conditions are right, uh, in April time, we've got a chance of actually going under very strict conditions with researchers to actually spot leatherback turtles and see them laying their eggs. Really, really special occasion to see this event, usually under red light, apart from when they go into this kind of amazing um, position of laying their eggs. But once they're going back out to sea, we're back into our red light, uh, as you can see here. Other animals include the long-tongued bat, and in the evenings, we go out to see night wildlife, such as whip scorpions, tarantulas, geckos, and even one of my favourites here, the velvet worm, which is a predatory invertebrate feeding here on a centipede. And all sorts of different moths, like this silk moth. And on one occasion, we went out, went out very early in the morning, we got the chance to see this piping guan, this pheasant peacock-sized bird. We go down to the caves as well to see oil birds, which actually can echolocate and, and get fruit like figs off trees. Really, really special moment to see these birds. And just as I go through the remaining slides, just some beautiful variety of different wildlife that's, that's to see here. These are the swamps where we go. There's a chance for tree bearers overhead, two-eyed fish, which you can see above and below the water. And with rum punch in our hands, the chance to see flamingos, tiger herons, and also scarlet, arbus, scarlet, scarlet ibises coming in to roost in the evening. 
So a beautiful way to finish off with uh, Trinidad. And just in the last uh, minute and a half, two minutes or so, we then get uh, a very small plane over towards Tobago. It's only a 20 minute flight or so. And we head up towards the very northeast of the island here, exploring the wetlands. And we're in a lovely hotel here looking out across towards little Tobago Island. And here it is just in front of us here. So this gives us a chance to see beautiful sandy blue seas, laughing gulls, um, lots of different fish in the sea again, beautiful, beautiful reefs, stunning tropical kingbirds and wading birds. This is in uh, sort of March, April time. So these are birds that are wintering in the Caribbean from Alaska, for example. We've got turnstones, we've got um, spotted sandpipers, we've got yellow legs and we've got things like dowitchers and other sandpipers, for example. But here we've also got the chance to see other wildlife in the rainforest. Here we've got some leaf cutting ants, for example. And at this particular moment, we got to see a new, dra uh, new dragonfly, a new hummingbird, a hummingbird that's only otherwise found in Venezuela. It's the white tailed saber wing with these beautiful white outer tail uh, wing feathers here. So beautiful chance to see the sable wing. And one of my favourites as well, looks just like a blackbird, but it's a yellow legged thrush with this kind of sooty plumage and yellow legs. And a Trinidad Mot Mot with this wonderful pendulum like tail at the bottom there coming out to say hello. And just in my final slides, this is little Tobago Island. Um, it's got lots of sheer waters on it. And in the north of the island, you get to see things like breeding brown boobies. And one of my favourites, the red-billed tropic bird. So my last few slides are just showing you some very lovely, cute photographs of this baby red-billed tropic bird here. And uh, a slightly bigger youngster. So because it's the tropics, they're nesting at slightly different times to each other. So there's the baby. And at the same time, we have this beautiful juvenile, which actually fledged um, while we were there. So I hope that that's taking you on a, a very quick but, but beautiful journey of St Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago and just giving you a flavour of the wonderful variety of wildlife um, that you're actually able to see there. I'm going to hand over to Byron now and Byron is going to uh, provide us with all the delicacies that, that Cuba, the Caribbean has to offer. Yes.